Hey, good morning. This is Groslin, and we are back, and I want to show some stuff that we've been working on lately, uh, including Insult to Injury 2.0. But first, I want to talk about something that I have been hacking together lately. Uh, it's called the Gresling, the Gresling Games Test Suite. Uh, this is a tool for people who are developing their own mods and who need to create test environments because that's usually the biggest pain in the ass aspect of mod development is coming up with a set of digital circumstances that aren't going to get in the way of what you're trying to do. So I started building this uh, last week just to start collecting some of the various tools that I've been using in batch files and, and console uh, and to put it into a single set of single tool set for my own use, but I very quickly realized that other people would find use use for it too. So it has become the Grazing Games Tool Suite and a test suite. So when you install it, and I generally recommend don't leaving it installed, just don't leave it installed, just install it when you need it, you will get this holotape that's sitting in your miscellaneous inventory. And we're gonna this is, I just released 1.05 yesterday. And this is what we got at the moment. Uh, this little switch right here, if I enable that, uh, the player is safe from all NPCs in the game. They all consider them, all the, all the NPCs in the game consider the player a friend unless they're frenzied. And so if you just wanna set up war games and but you want you yourself want to stay out of the fray, you just want to set NPCs against each other, turn on friendly mode. If you turn it back off, you're back to vanilla. I uh, hear, let's see, this is something new I put in over the weekend to help with insult to injury. Uh, it's just a little tool here for if you want to damage yourself, knock out some HP, knock out some limb damage, and or add some rads. Um, again, I added that for ITI so I can test the bandages. Uh, these first four, these are teleports. Uh, these first four teleports go to uh, special custom versions of these locations. Uh, these are not the vanilla locations, they're just copies of them. Uh, these, none of these have NPCs, so if you need to do a root cellar upgrade, for anything, uh, you can easily do that by teleporting to one of these four, and that would be a, that's a safe place to do it. Uh, these bottom three are the vanilla locations, but they're safe little corners of the vanilla locations. Like Boston Airport, if I teleport over there right now, it will put me at the top of the, the parking garage. Uh, Diamond City, I think teleports over by the haircut place and the Vault 111 exterior teleports over into the little corner by the control station. So anyway, but um, whenever you teleport into any of these, it's considered a test mode. And once you're there, there will be another little menu item here that says return to teleport to return marker. You click that, it will put you right, it will teleport you right back to where you left, where you originally teleported from. So we're going to teleport to the Olivia test room, and again, there will be a re there will be a return marker item in the menu. If I if I use that, it will bring me right back here to Sanctuary. So let's go to let's go to Olivia. I want to show you what I've done there. Okay, this is the satellite Olivia station. Uh, this is the workroom. If you remember in the vanilla game, this is all full of cluttered stuff. I cleared it all out, added a bunch of workbenches, uh, some chests. If you're if you're running PA MPC or if you're running ITI, uh, you're also going to all the items that are, that are introduced by those mods are going to get auto spawned into these boxes along with a few things that you're probably going to find useful for testing. Uh, those are all the ITI items, all the med items plus a few of the standards. 
Uh, over here, got a 500 of every of the craft, every one of the craftable components in the base game. So you can you can test out crafting as you need. There's an institute bed. There's a full set of XO1 if you want to do power armor testing. Uh, four safes locked at each level if you want to test if you want to test lock picking and terminals each level if you want to lock if you want to test terminal lock picking everything else in here is pretty much olivia uh, including that trap uh, except the fact that all the npcs are pulled out so if you want to do an npc run test like for example with pa npc you basically would come out here look down here do a place there in console drop a few raiders down there you can test them out uh, there's also a dirty sleeping bag for iti testing so none of the other of the test cells have a workstation like this so i consider consider olivia basically be the entry point for the Grezzin Games test suite. If you need to, if you want, if if you want to test in any of the other cells, pop over here first, and then grab whatever you need. And then you can come back over here, see if there's the return marker. If I click return marker, that will take me back to sanctuary. Uh, but if I go, if I if I go to to any of these, I'll let me show you. Like teleport to Boston Airport. Now, if I see if I see OC over to Boston Airport, just normally, it would teleport me down to that corner right there, right there. It would teleport me roughly about right there, and that would be easily within the aggro range of some of these ferals, and they would attack. So this way, if you use the, if you use this tool, it spawns you up here. You're not within the aggro range of anybody, and you can do your thing. Uh, I like Boston Airport as a test because it's a nice, wide open space, and it's it's just a good open air testing ground. Um, been using this a lot for arena testing. And I'm going to go back to Olivia for right now. Okay, so we're back in Olivia. Now, that is the Grezzin Games test suite. The other thing I want to, the other thing I want to show today is Insult to Injury 2.0. Now, I'm going to say this right now. I made a lot of changes to 2.0. Uh, there's a lot of, it's almost a rewritten version of mod. So if there are, it, any patches at this moment, any patches out there, consider them only to work with 1.3. Do not use them with 2.0. We will get all the patches updated, but if you use them with 2.0, you're going to break something. So do not use any patches right now. Wait for the 2.0 patches. They will be coming soon. Um, a couple changes I made to insult to injury. Uh, first of all, I took out, I took out the survival dependency. Uh, 1.3 required survival mode. Uh, this does not. Uh, the only things that that it real, the only thing that it really survival was needed for was some of the disease management and uh, being able to tell whether you slept in a dirty bed. If you're not a survival mode, insult or injury is no longer going to care about that stuff. So, as of as of 2.0, you no longer need survival mode to run it. Um, I still recommend it, but you don't. It, it's not. It's not a requirement. Now, in case you never played my original insult to injury, uh, this is the rules are still basically the same. The general idea is that in the vanilla game, the vanilla game is constantly looking for excuses to restore your limb health to 100. Uh, percent If you take a nap. Your limbs magically heal. You go to a doctor, your limbs magically heal. You pop a stim pack, your limbs magically heal. Uh, it's 
it's kind of ridiculous if you're trying to do any sort of immersive survival type of game build. Uh, and personally, I think the Fallout New Vegas system was much better. This tries to implement... It's, it's inspired by the FNV system. I'm not going to say it tries to duplicate it, but it tries to at least emulate some of it. Uh, basically, if, your limb, if you hurt your limbs, they're going to stay hurt for a while. Okay, so here's the general idea behind ITI. In real life, if you fell down and you broke your arm, there's a limited amount of things that a doctor can actually do about that. Uh, they can set it. They can give you some pain management. Uh, they can't magically heal it. All they can do is sort of set the conditions right so that your body can heal it over time. But it's going to take some time. I can testify to this. About a month ago, I, I had a falling accident. I hurt my ribs. Uh, it's been about five weeks. And while I'm doing much, much, much better, and I think I probably did fracture a rib, uh, it still hurts. It's taken a long time to heal. And I was told point blank by my doctor that really there's nothing they can do about it. And unless, like, I have breathing problems, which I haven't. So just pain management, rest, sleep up, you know, sleep elevated, and try not to, get, not to further hurt yourself. That's what happens when you break a bone and when you, when you get seriously hurt. So that's what ITI does. First of all, we take all the magical healing out of it, just completely get rid of it. If, if you, if, if you patch up, okay, if you go to a doctor, there's only a limited amount they can do. You're not going to magically nap your way to full health. You're not going to stim pack your way to full health. So the obvious question you're going to ask me now is how do you, how do you fix a broken limb? Well, first of all, let's, let me show this off here. Uh, we're going to go back to the Grassland Games test suite. I'm going to enter the player. And I'm going to... Let's knock our... Let's broke both arms down to about 25%. I've got a stat now. You can see both arms should now be about 25%. And we're going to... Grab one of these. Now, insult to injury introduces uh, nine or ten new health items, uh, and they all do different things. Uh, basically, all the health items introduced by ITI will do one or two, one or one or the other of both things. Uh, they will either dress a wound or they'll stabilize a wound. Stabilizing is what happens when you completely break a, break a limb. Your limb is crippled. Uh, you, you need to set it. Uh, you need to make sure it doesn't move. That way, you know, the bone can start knitting, the bone can start healing. Uh, that's stabilization. And an item like, for example, a SAM medical splint or a wasteland splint, that's all they do. Uh, like if I go, it, it, all all those those do are they set the wound, they, they set this to the broken bone. Uh, they will make it uncrippled, but they will only make it uncrippled up to about maybe ten percent. So don't get it hurt again, or you're going to recripple it right away. If your if your limb is wounded, but if it's not completely broken, uh, then what's basically what you're doing is you're bleeding like crazy. You're seriously, you're seriously hurt, but it's not broken. It doesn't need to be stabilized. It needs to be dressed. And things like the wasteland dressing, improvised dressing, that's what they do. They restore the health of the limb. As long as it's not broken, they restore the, limb, the health of the limb up to a certain limited amount. Items like the combat trauma... I think the combat trauma kit does both. Uh, the... There are a couple things here that do both. The MedTech Tactical Trauma Kit is probably the best one uh, that does both. 
And then the Brotherhood Hydra is a very rare item that works the way Hydra did in Fallout New Vegas, where for like 60 seconds or something like that, uh, it will just continually recharge the health of your limbs. Um, it's also highly addictive. So it's rare, it's addictive. So just be aware of that. Uh, and some, like I said, some of the items do both. But we're gonna we're gonna grab some basic uh, trauma kits. Okay, I see. And it'll say in the the it's the stay in the description here that it can stabilize and or dress. Um, if you're running survival mode, they each have a certain risk of disease. Like for example, if you're using a dirty wasteland dressing, you're it's you've got a much higher risk of disease than if you're using a standard trauma kit. So and the disease the diseases are just the survival mode diseases. So just be aware of that. Uh now let's so now we got two broken arms and we got some trauma kits. So the way you use them is you come back into inventory, you go to aid. And you do the trauma kit. This is new to ITI 2.0. Uh, in ITI 1.3, what it would do right now is it would apply the it, it would apply the bandage to whatever limb was hurt the worst and call it a day. Now you can choose where you're going to apply it. You bring this up, you bring this menu up, and you use the item. This right here will tell you numerically how your limbs are actually doing. Uh, these are in the same order as they would be on the pit boys so these are reversed so this is actually would be the would be right arm that's left arm because that's the way it shows on the pit boy and so our options for the trauma kit right now is we could dress either one of the arms if one of the arms is broken it would say dress or st dress and stabilize but this will tell you exactly which treatments are available and you can choose the treatments. So we're gonna address the left arm. And that should, yep. So now we're, now the arm's dressed. Now hopefully, yeah. We can't dress the arm, the left arm any farther than that level. There's only so much you can do with bandages. You can't heal yourself completely with bandages. So here's the thing about ITI. Once you've dressed up, once you've once you patch yourself up as far as you can do with an actual first aid, you know, kit, the only thing you can do at that point is sleep it off. All I think you can do is either go find a doctor and get yourself healed up or just take the time, wait, get some sleep, try not to get your, try to not to get yourself hurt anymore. Now, here's the catch. You cannot chain nap your way to health. Every time you sleep, there's a cool down period for health restoration. So you can only there's only so there's only so much health restoration the limb health restoration you can do within a twenty four hour period of time. So don't think you can just take five naps and get, make your limb all better. It doesn't work that way. Uh, the limb, the sleep limb restoration is a percentage-based process. So, like, so if, for example, your limb condition is 15, that's pretty damaged. If your limb's condition, if likely your left arm condition is 15, and you sleep, you may end up with a 17% limb health at the end of that nap. But then the next time you sleep, you're going to get a little bit more from that, maybe up to about 20, 21 percent. And then the time after that, maybe 26 to 30 percent. It's it's percentage based, so it accumulates as you go. Uh, so the first couple of nights are going to be really rough, and then after a handful of further nights, the the healing process is going to accelerate. <coughs> Again, this is kind of mirroring what the what it would be like in real life. Uh, you can adjust all these settings, by the way. 
I don't expect that everybody is going to agree with me on what realism and balance is. So you can alter, you can alter the rates, you can alter how things work. Uh, also in ITI 2.0, there are stim pack cooldowns. Uh, there was a stim pack cooldown for effectiveness in 1.3, or if you use stim packs within a couple hours, uh, that what would happen is it would only be 50% effective. Uh, now there's a second cooldown period where if you get it within within number the X number of minutes that you can set here, it will actually prevent you from using the stim pack. If for some reason you use an item including a stim pack and it and the ITI decides that no, you really can't use it right now. You'll get a message, and it'll give you this. It'll give you the item back. Uh, let's see the infection system. I just kind of hope it works. Uh, this this is tied into the the survival system, and this is this stuff. I need to change that. This the infection stuff. What happens there is if you're walking around with like damaged wounds damaged limbs and it's raining or you sleep on a bad bed or there's some reason where you're exposing yourself to things that you shouldn't be exposing yourself to then you're running a risk of the limb itself becoming infected if the limb itself becomes affected as long as it's infected it will periodically damage itself until it until your limb is crippled again which leads to all the other problems I mentioned before. Uh, if you let a limb infection kind of go on, it will spread to the other limbs. So if you let it go, if you just let your limb infection go, eventually you're going to end up with all your limbs crippled, including your head. So you fix that with antibiotics. You fix that by going to the doctor. Speaking of doctors, ITI 2.0 now supports doctors. This is new... This may still be a little wonky. It should mostly work. Um, and what this does is in ITI 1.3, if you go to it, if you went to a doctor, the doctor would simply heal all your limbs up to 100% because I didn't have a really reliable way of interacting with the doctor's script without rewriting it, which I refused to do. So now I do. So this will limit the amount of limb health a doctor can give you uh, that this alters a little bit there you there are some bonuses there for Institute Brotherhood or railroad I think the Institutes the technically I think the Institute doctor will just heal you hundred um, percent because it's a rare there's only one guy in the entire game does that uh, Brotherhood Brotherhood gives you something like one point one point three I think so it's like a 30% bonus. Uh, the railroad is a 10% bonus. Everyone else, wasteland doctors, due to Diamond City, this is the limit. This is the limit they can do. So adjust that however you need. Uh, do, do, do. And I will add more things to the MCM menu. Uh, you can also now turn off ITI whenever you want. Uh, if you just click that to off, you'll be back. You should be back vanilla operation let's see what else do you need to know uh the let's see hydra yeah let me show you what hydra does uh, let's show you what hydra does hydra is is basically like the hydra in uh, fallout new vegas Okay, Hydra and stim packs in ITI are entirely scripted. So if you've got any other mods that are using it, that are editing stim packs at all, I mean at all, you're going to need a patch. If you load whatever the other mod is lower, lower in your load order than ITI, it's going to obliterate all the stim pack management ITI does. So be warned. I am replacing stim packs with, in ITI with a completely scripted system, so it will need a patch, uh, which we will be working on. Okay. Now, in case you've never played Fallout New Vegas, the lore behind the 
with Brotherhood Hydra is that Caesar's Legion, who was the big baddie in Fallout New Vegas, uh, managed to synthesize this stuff from things like Night Stalker Venom and and shrooms and whatever the whatever the hell else they found lying around, and came up with this stuff that restores limb health. Uh, you take this, and in New Vegas, you had a 60 second effect where every every one second for 60 seconds, you got 10 percent health restoration back in all your limbs. Uh, that's a very powerful effect. And it's considered it's supposed to be a fairly rare item. Uh, I I made some changes. It doesn't exactly do the same thing here, but it's pretty close. Uh, my my lore explanation for Brotherhood Hydra is that the Brotherhood that are that are in Fallout Four are from the ones down in Capital Wasteland in Fallout Three, which in turn came from the West Coast. They brought. They brought Hydra with them, which they would have had, and they've spent some time synthesizing a version. And that's what Brotherhood Hydra is. Uh, it's most, but it mostly works the same way it does in Fallout New Vegas. It's mostly still the Caesar's Legion Brotherhood Hydra, just in a just, just in a better delivery mechanism. Uh, the thing is about Brotherhood Hydra is that it's still super addictive. I think you got like a forty percent chance of getting addicted to it every time you use it. So it's a rare item. Uh, the only place you can find it in the vanilla game is you buy it from the Brotherhood vendor on the big airship. And uh, and otherwise, if you find it anywhere else, it's either a bug in ICI or some or somebody has patched it to the level is. But again, it's got about a forty percent uh, addiction rate. So it's. It, it, Use it if you need to, but just be prepared for, for the addiction. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna do this. Let's see, how are we doing on? Okay, yeah, because we just patched it, didn't we? All right, so let's pop that. Hey, we got lucky. We didn't get addicted. So let's see. I think we're, it should be working. Oh, that's not right. That's a bug. I screwed that up. Yeah, I don't think it's working right. Yeah, I screwed that up. I'll fix that. Uh, I'll fix that up in, in just a minute before we before I ship that. But what it would be doing is you would see you would see these increasing as long as that effect is in place. And I broke the effect, so that's an easy enough thing to fix. Anyway, so that is the Grazing Games test suite, and that is the Salt Injury 2.0. Those will be the GT. The GTS is available on the Grizzly Games Discord right now. Uh, the Assault Injury 2.0 will be available sometime in the next couple hours, and I'm happy to get that out the door because that means that now I can clear the decks and get back to work on pace, which I've been promising to do now for about two months. All right. So now. We got that out of the way. Let's get to what we really want to be doing here. And get back to the Wrestling Games 10 Suite. Okay, so this is our safe teleports into Diamond City. Real vault suit? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, all right, so you know, one thing I one thing I noticed a long time ago was missing from Fallout Four is that there were not yeah enough with 
Wow, they talk loud. Let's just go over here. Okay. One thing I was really missing in Fallout 4, I've always felt, was uh, more tactical nuclear options. Uh, there's not just not enough options there for making big boom booms. So I want to talk about what we've done. God help us. As we have updated Atomic Ramen. It now has an MCM menu. And I want to just kind of show you how that works real quick. Uh, if you can just TGM. Yeah, I did. And let's put the gun away because that's going to complicate things. All right. And uh, let's throw a cow. Okay. Atomic Brahmin, in case you've never, pl you never played with this mod before. Yeah. Okay, let me explain this real quick. Atomic Brahmin was a joke. It came out, I, I wrote this about five years ago. Somebody on Nexus forums, uh, just in the suggestions, uh, to, to suggestions thread, asked for some mod author to quote unquote do something about all these Brahmin. So I thought it would be funny to basically slap, slap a nuclear, a, a Batman explosion, a mini nuke explosion onto their hitbox and so that every time you shot them, they blow up. And I, it took me about 15 minutes. And somebody asked, some, they loved it, and they immediately asked, well, can you make the, make the cows so that they go crazy and all attack each other? Why, yes, yes, I can. And so... I did that. That's been Atomic Ramen. Very simple idea. Very simple implementation. Well, for some damn reason, uh, it got brought up recently, and we just and I decided over the weekend to I think it was Saturday. I decided to sit down, and kind of flesh out some of the mechanics here, uh, because that's just kind of what some sick bastards want. And so what we're going to do, what we have now is we've got cow tipping. Now, this only happens when you are when the player is unarmed. You have to punch the cow. If you shoot them, they still explode. If anybody else shoots them, they explode. However, if you punch them, this is what happens now. And I think now I need to go away because Okay, so what happens is when you punch the cow, when you tip the cow, you arm them. And then you've got a, you've got a handful of seconds that you can specify in MCM. And then after, that's, after that period of time goes by, they suddenly, they go crazy, they frenzy, they go, they, their alert flag gets set, and they go looking for the nearest combat target, and when they get hit in the process, they explode. So let's do that one more time. Again, if they get shot beforehand, if you shoot them beforehand, they will just explode. Now, you can change that now. Uh, Tommy Brahma didn't have MCM in, in 1.0, but now it does. You can adjust their fuse timer. Again, this is the timer gets set when you punch them. And once they get up and they kind of figure out what the hell is going on, now you've got X number of seconds before they start looking for trouble. Uh, this goes up to, I think, 20. Uh, this, if you set this to on, they're going to arise from their their state uh, already, already hostile to the player. So if you want them to be completely non-combat initially with the player when they when the fuse timer when they, when they arm turn this off. If you have this, this has this will basically tell tell the mod uh, to make it so that they're vulnerable to being shot, that, that they can explode before you actually manually arm them 
which is the default. If you turn this off, they will not be vulnerable to nuclear detonation until you actually punch them and arm them. Uh, until then, they're just normal, normal Brahmin. This skips the timer altogether. So uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this because that means that as soon as you punch them, they're probably going to punch you right back and boom. But if you, if for some reason that's what you want, turn that on. So let's throw one more, let's throw another Brahmin over here because that's kind of, that's what we're doing this morning. Cow tipped. What the hell? What the hell? I was just minding my own business. Some, some asshole came and punched me in the head. I'm gonna go. That's Atomic Ramen 2.0. That's it. This will not be a Brahmin overhaul. We will not be adding power armor perks. Uh, there will be no quest. We will not be adding any AI. This is the extent of the idea. Just a cow, the ability to tip them, and an explosion. You're welcome. So that's where we're at today. That's the stat. That's the stats reported for Grizzling Games. And I'm going to put out. I'm going to get that Hydra thing fixed, and then I'll put out ITI 2.0 today. And then we're back to pace. And I'm looking forward to getting that finally back underway. Uh, we're probably you're probably not going to ship a PAN PC this week because I, again I want to make some progress on pace uh, because right now pace right now PAN PC is kind of a, a technologically ahead of of pace, so I want to catch pace up and then that way the next round of PAN PC is probably going to be about finding better ways to take down the pace companions. Because that's how things work. Anyway, uh, this is Grizzlin. I hope you ha I hope you all are having fun out there and staying safe. Uh, drop by the Grizzlin Games Discord. Uh, these are all these things are available for download right now. Except again, except for ITI 2.0, which will be done as which will be out as soon as I fix the bugs. It should be out by the time I release this video, though. And uh, yeah, so come on out, say hi. We're a group. We're a good bunch of people, and we like making stupid things. So have a good day. Take care.